Andy Nowicki, altrightnovelist.com. I have weighed in a couple of times before on the phenomenon of Mark Shea. And when I say weigh in, that's not a fat joke, by the way. I've spoken about Mark Shea a couple of times before. Back in November, I recorded a video in which I discussed the basic problem, what I just, what I termed the scandal that Mark Shea is allowed to be a Catholic apologist in some official capacity for the church and hasn't been called to heal by anyone, any of the higher ups, anyone with authority over him. And again, what I was saying there wasn't that I thought he should be censored. I don't think he should be shut up. I was, ne I never wanted to do that. I never, I still don't want to do that, which makes him, makes me very different from him in that sense. And from makes me, makes most of his critics very different from him and that he is very interested in shutting people up, muzzling people, getting people, uh, banned from speaking and trying to get people into trouble, trying to dox people from their jobs, all kinds of things like that. This is typical Mark Shea behavior, unfortunately. But uh, I didn't propose, and I don't propose, that he be censored, but rather that he be censured. Now those are two words which are almost homonyms, but they have very different meanings. Well, not very different meanings. I mean. They have different meanings, significantly different meanings. Censured simply means being called to task, being brought to heel in one way or another. And I think that is highly appropriate in Mark Shea's case in that he is a Catholic blogger of some official standing with the church. And I think the fact that he hasn't been officially called to heel by anyone of authority it amounts to a kind of scandal. Now, is it the worst scandal that the church faces today? By no means. And I don't wish to blow things out of proportion here. But it is nevertheless a scandal in that Mark Shea's all too common behavior with others, and again, I'm not bringing ideology into it, I'm not bringing theology into it, I'm not uh, discussing uh, how Mark Shea feels or stands on any particular political or social issues, because that isn't the point. That isn't, that isn't the issue that I raise here, and it's never been the issue that I raise here. Now, after I did that original video, Mark Shea, of course, wrote me back, wrote me, I should say, not back, but he, he responded to me, and I didn't write him. He responded to me by writing to my private email, which I had never given him. Somehow he got a hold of it and basically told me that I was in danger of going to hell unless I repented of being uh, affiliated with the alt-right. So he brought politics into it. I did not. For me, it's never been about politics because people of different political persuasions, uh, you know, who, uh, who have challenged him in some way, have, uh, you know, who have, who have riled his, his ego in some way, have been similarly badly treated in the manner that I was. So, uh, so that was my initial video. And I think I, I made it back in November of last year. And s since that time, there has not been, to my knowledge, anyone who has followed up on my uh, my counsel, which is disappointing, but not terribly surprising. I wish it were more surprising than it is, but it seems that inaction is often the, just the name of the game. And uh, people, people are allowed to abuse other people with very little uh, 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 instances of being called to heal, or if it ever comes, it's too little, too late, in much, much worse types of abuse than what I'm talking about here. 
But I do think that what I'm talking about here is still important because it does, we are talking about souls being at stake. And this is the point that I've made in my prior videos as well. I won't repeat or rehash what I said uh, concerning that matter. But uh, please go back and review my earlier video, uh, my, the one that I recorded back in November, if you want to see what I had to say in more detail about that and why I do think it is important that somebody who is representing the church in some kind of official capacity, uh, again, be uh, restrained in some manner. But that hasn't, that hasn't, apparently that hasn't happened. Unless it's happening through, or unless they're trying it through some back channels, uh, 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 you know, uh, which is the scuttlebutt that I had heard from a couple of places that, you know, uh, some uh, some people are trying to talk to him, saying, you know, you gotta you gotta cool it with all this, uh, you know, uh, banishing people and condemning people and abusing and insulting people, you know. You've contributed some nice things. You've contributed uh, great things to the church, and you've written some good books. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe he has. I haven't read his books, to be fair, and maybe they're good. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think that there have been, my impression is, at least from what I've been told, there have been people trying to reach him through back channels, uh, trying to uh, communicate, you know, um, uh, get somewhere with honey rather than with vinegar, you know, as the, or with the carrot rather than the whip <laughs> to, uh, to mix up a couple of metaphors there that mean essentially the same thing. So that was the video that I left, that I recorded back in November of last year. And then earlier in this year, uh, in March, it was, uh, I weighed in again on the Mark Shea matter. And this time, I considered just who uh, or, or what Mark Shea represents, and it was a serious question because I'm not going to use the word toxic here. You know, I'm sick to death of people talking about how everybody's toxic. Um, you know, I, the only time I use the word toxic anymore is if I'm talking about something that is literally poisonous because. The use of toxic has gotten toxic. <laughs> the metaphorical use of the term toxic is now toxic to me to the point that I don't use it, except that I just did, but ironically there. But I will say there is something uniquely malignant about his personality, uniquely malignant about Mark Shea's entire demeanor and presentation. And I, again, in that in that video that I recorded back in March, I wanted to tread carefully because I don't use terms like demon or demonism lightly. And I don't, as I, as I said back in March, I was making no allegations of demonic possession or anything like that. I'm not qualified for one thing to, to speak to matters like that. But there is something just just uniquely malignant about him. He is truly a blot, uh, just a vicious, vile person in his behavior online uh, towards others. And uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not just another jerk, another jackass online. There are plenty of those. But as I was saying before, he is somebody who represents the church in some official capacity or seemingly official capacity. Apparently a couple of you have said, no, he's not an official spokesman for the church. Don't fall for that idea. Well, he presents himself as such and he, uh, he actually is invited to speak in uh, parishes and talks about matters of theology or what have you. And maybe his, his theology is sound and solid. I don't know. But his behavior towards other people is vile. And, you know, I think the fact that I'm recording this video, this is actually the fourth video that I've recorded 
about Mark Shea. There was the initial one in November, and then I recorded one after he responded to me uh, on email. And then there was the one that I did back in March where I was more meditating on just what the Mark Shea phenomenon represents. And I, I, I called it a foul stench, you know, quoting Leia Organa, speaking of Grand Moff Tarkin in uh, episode four of Star Wars, A New Hope. There is a, f a foul psychic stench about this man that is impressive in the sense that it leaves a very strong impression. And it seems in some ways to be almost Well, again, I hesitate to use uh, a term like demonic, but there is something about the fact that he is able, just through his words, through his, his uh, insults and his slander and his abuse and his sanctimony, it's the combination of the abuse and the sanctimony somebody who thinks he's who's so high on the horse and yet who stoops so low so commonly to insult and defame others i mean that's a pretty unique combination most people who are that nasty to other people wouldn't uh uh i don't know would, would somehow have the kind of humility to uh not to refrain from claiming that they are uh, deeply concerned with grave moral issues of the day when clearly they so often vent their spleen and, and uh, just indulge in, in patent spite and cruelty and vulgarity the way that he does. I mean, most most nasty people would be more uh, more humble about that and say, "No, you're you're right. I'm just a I'm just a son of a bitch." But Mark Shea somehow combines being you know thinking of himself as this crusader, as this holier than thou kind of character. He combines that with just guttural levels of spite and cruelty and meanness and uh, and it really gets to people that's the thing and I, mark if you're watching this i mean you, maybe you maybe uh you're uh feeling some kind of pride at the fact that that uh that people are so uh, so put off by you, that people are so, that you have such a strong effect on other people to the point where it's hard to ignore you. It's hard to disregard you. I mean, that is a power. It's an extremely malignant power, but it is a power. And if you wanna take pride in that, Mark Shea, then I suppose you will. But understand when I'm say that what I'm saying here is that it is not a uh, it is not a power for good. And Mark Shea is not in any sense operating as a force for good in the church in. I don't know, in his circle of the world, again, I'm not saying that, that he's an incredibly important figure. And I'm not saying I'm an incredibly important figure either. I'm not uh, putting myself above him in stature. You know, obviously not. But uh, it is a remarkable power that he has to get under people's skin, to aggravate, to infuriate, uh, to 
to cause people to feel absolute despair and to, to, to magnify a level of hatred and, and, uh, and anger and bitterness in other people. I spoke in previous videos about how encountering Mark Shea, you know, as a, as a seeking Catholic back in 2006, I believe it was, as somebody who was at that time going through uh, the process of conversion. And at the time, Mark Shea, uh, you know, presented himself as a social conservative. Today, he's, he's you know, become the opposite of that. But at that time, he was, you know, uh, uh, he, he presented himself as a strong uh, advocate for, uh, for life and uh, against abortion and in general, you know, favorable to the pro-life cause that he has since, you know, trashed, even though he claims to still be against abortion. But anybody else who's against abortion and who wants to uh, do things politically or socially or activistically to oppose abortion, Mark Shea seems to, without fail, deride, deride these people and uh, insult them and speak of them as if they were trash, as if they were scum and uh, and so forth. This is what I gather. Uh, understand I'm not, this is all what I'm, all of what I can comprehend of Mark Shea now, all of what I apprehend about Mark Shea now is via osmosis. <clears throat> because I learned some time ago that with a man who has this kind of really frightening power to create dissension and despair and hatred. And no, I'm not comparing you to Jesus, Mark. I'm not saying that you're like, you, that you're going to, you know, somebody might say, well, Jesus said he came to create division. Uh, no, I'm not saying it. <laughs> he doesn't come across as a Christ-like figure in any way, in any sense. But he's, he's rather someone who can take a person who uh, is struggling in some way and make him struggle even more. He can take a person who, who uh, is battling anger problems or a person who is having a, a crisis of faith in one way or another and can absolutely make him <clears throat> far more angry, like 10 times angrier, 100 times angrier, just by speaking with him, just by being himself, apparently. I hesitate to think that this is how, that the way Mark Shea behaved is the way that God made him. And that's what makes me wonder whether there isn't something preternatural going on. And again, that's all just based on observation and hunch on my part <clears throat> as somebody who you know has dabbled in studying exorcism and the demonic but who is in no way anything more than an amateur but uh you know in, in discerning these kinds of things but it is something that i think one can honestly wonder about with respect to Mark Shea. So he can take people wherever they're at and make them worse and not care. He doesn't care. I pointed out to Mark Shea that uh, back when I was in the process of converting that he very nearly derailed my conversion. He didn't care. He doesn't seem to care what the, the, the effect that he has on other people. He doesn't seem to care that abusing and insulting 
and uh, coming up with snap judgments, you know, be behaving extremely judgmentally and sanctimoniously, and he doesn't seem to care. And the problem is that nobody else, you know, I think that his circle, from what I can gather, his circle of influence has uh, has grown smaller through the years. And that's a good thing. He has had some problems uh, with uh, getting published. He, he, he was successfully removed from the publication of the National Catholic Register because enough people were complaining about him behaving the way that he behaves. But it's, it hasn't been enough, not nearly enough. And the people around him don't seem to be aware of what he, the damage that he is doing. And I'm not just speaking for myself. If this were just a personal thing, if this were just a, you know, a personal vendetta of some kind, if it was just, you know, um, Mark Shea has been great to so many other people, but me personally, I have a problem with him then I think I would be out of bounds here. And as also, as I've said before, those of you who, who want to think that they can dismiss me because they know that I'm in some form or fashion affiliated with the alt-right, uh, you can dismiss me, as, as I said in a prior video, I think. Dismiss my case, but look at the hundreds of other cases of people who are reporting almost exactly the same thing. So. Uh, I don't want to get too rambling here. Let me let me bring things to a close. I would say that people to people who are watching this, who have been affected by this malignant phen phenomenon of Mark Shea, I would counsel you to try to do what I have tried to do, and that is not to uh, have anything to do with him, not to pay attention to him not to respond to him, not to uh, read his posts and repost them elsewhere, you know, with angry comments about how unfair he is, about how ridiculous he is, about what a jackass he is. I believe that when you're doing that, you are not doing your soul any favors. So I think that what is best to do is to put him out of your mind, to just put him aside. And that's not to say <clears throat> that uh, you shouldn't ignore him. That's not to say that you should entirely ignore him. If he says something reprehensible, you know, which seems to happen every single day. I think that, uh, you know, some kind of response is, is, could be called for, but just don't get, uh, don't let him pull you into it. Don't let him pull you into the slime that seems to be the place where his soul lives. And again, he is incredibly powerful in that sense. He is somebody who, whether it's his own personal <laughs> malignant talent or whether he's getting help from some malignant source that is not his, not him, we have to give the man his due. He is really, really adept at getting under people's skin and bringing out the worst in other people. You know, we see, we see the worst of him and we end up behaving in some way like him if we spend too much time in his company. I'm not saying we become as bad as he is. You know, I'm not saying there's no, that's moral equivalency, which I would definitely askew, but 
if you spend too much time around him, reading his words, uh, getting uh, getting pulled into his his orbit. <laughs> you know, in the case of Mark Shea, uh, fat jokes are almost uh, like it, it, it's uh, you almost think more fondly of Mark Shea if you think of him as, as a fatso. Um, so, you know, normally I would say it's not nice to make jokes about how people look, but in Mark Shea's case, thinking of, thinking of him as a, as a fat slob, um, that, that might be a good way of, of diminishing his, uh, the power the terrible, malignant power that he seems to have, that he seems to be able to exercise over people. I see it happening and it concerns me, and I'm not a person of any stature or of authority or authority in the church. You know, I'm just a, I mean, a humble Catholic, extremely humble Catholic. I'm a practicing Catholic who struggles every day. Uh, I don't hold myself up in any way uh, as someone to be emulated. But uh, again, just consider what I'm saying. This is just a little bit of advice because it's what I at some point decided I needed, I needed to do. <clears throat> don't go to his site. Don't repeat some obnoxious post of his don't work yourself up, up into a lather um, and, uh, you know, maintain some distance, you know, maintain some kind of ironic distance. I think that uh, Larry Cody and others, you know, Larry Cody, who calls him the pastry pontiff, <laughs> uh, that's that's a way, yeah, again, okay, it's Bush League, it's making fun of him for being fat, but that's a way of just, uh, for one thing, it's clever, it's, it's alliterative, which I can appreciate um, as a writer, or as a would-be writer, as somebody who is trying to write, um, sees it as his vocation to write. And for another thing, it, it just keeps him at a certain ironic distance from yourself. And... It, uh, don't get subsumed in the hate that he represents because he really does represent hate. He represents something really bad, really terrible. And he is a blot on the church. And yes, pray for his repentance, of course. We should pray for everybody, pray for our enemies. That's what we're told to do. But eschew his company. And if the higher-ups in the church can't or won't do anything about him, just like they don't seem to be willing to do anything about a lot of abusers in the church until it's too late, you know, that's, that's a problem in the church. That's a problem being faced by the post-conciliar church. And the church has always had problems, of course. But I wanted to... Uh, just end on the note that the church is still, does still represent uh, the truth, and we still do receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ through the sacraments, and none of that has changed. But man, there's a furious attack a furious attack on the church right now. And I think that, I don't think I'm being too presumptuous in saying I think that Mark Shea is somebody who has been caught up in this furious attack. And okay, I'll, I'll just end by saying, yeah, I, I do suspect some, that demonism is playing some role. I guess I was a little more circumspect about it earlier, but now I'm going to end with 
Yeah. I'm not saying he's possessed, but there's just too much. There's too much absolutely dark and vile. Uh, energy and uh, and so forth surrounding him that cannot be ignored. So keep him at a distance, keep him at an ironic distance, and treat him the way you might treat a demon. You know, we, we aren't strong enough to fight demons on our own. Not to say that Mark Shea's arguments are, are strong, but this thing about him, this is a hideous, a hideous strength, this aspect of him that is able to create so much hatred and dissension and division and tear people up. This is something that must be taken seriously. So just a few words of advice, take it or leave it, but I appreciate you watching me ramble on about this subject. I do think it's an important subject, and that's why I've devoted yet another video to talking about it. My name's Andy Nowicki. Check out my work at altrightnovelist.com. Talk to y'all soon.